overwhelm and anxiety, and it makes them just want to quit. They start telling themselves that they've never been successful, they never will be successful, this is what always happens. So there's a difference between kindness Mm -hmm. and like letting yourself off the hook completely. You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Mueller, and it's my mission to equip women to declutter their homes, their time, and their lives so that they can cherish what truly matters. Hello, Decluttering Club, and welcome to uh, the podcast episode number 14. We have a special treat for you today. We are with my amazing, wonderful, dear friend, Selena Jones, and she is going to talk to us about decluttering and having the right mindset with decluttering and how shame tends to hold us back. So, Selena, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I've been so excited. Um, So yeah, my name's Selena. I'm a decluttering coach, and I'm also a grief and trauma therapist. And I am super passionate about talking not just about the actual steps of decluttering, but the psychological side of it, because um, our mindset can really kind of be the make or break for success. Oh my gosh, absolutely. A hundred percent. I love it. You know, I love I love your heart, but I also, I love your background. I think it's such a unique, it's so needed, right? The grief and trauma, the mindset and the declaring. I love that. So can you tell us, tell us a little bit about like, where are you from? Um, and then also how did you come to like, have this interest and this, this, you know, how did you make this your thing? Yeah. So, um, I lived just outside of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and about three years ago, um, I was I was drowning in clutter. I had uh, downsized from a 4,500 square foot home to 1,200 square feet. Still hadn't gotten rid of enough stuff that I needed to. And then I found you. And so I was a student of yours. And, uh, you know, you taught me all of these foundational steps on how to work through all of the excess stuff. And um, I was already had a well-established career in psychology, and I realized that some of the missing links for some people was just their mindset. What if you know the what they were telling themselves about their stuff and about how they felt about it, and you know this kind of fear sometimes of letting go. And um, you know once I kind of sort of nailed that physical process, and I worked through that psychological process myself. Um, I really, I really wanted to tell as many people as possible that there's so many creative ways to work through it when you feel stuck. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. So, what are some of the things that you see people do? You know, when they're decluttering, like, like how does what kind of a mindset do you see that is holding people back? I think a lot of times I see um, overwhelm and anxiety, and it makes them just want to quit. Um, They start telling themselves that they've never been successful, they never will be successful, this is what always happens, I'm a failure. I mean, so many things start popping up and they put these labels on themselves, which um, they're not helpful, they're not serving them, and they're actually, they're not even true. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the things that, you know, both you and I believe in strongly is we are so much more than our stuff, like our stuff is just our stuff. We can still be amazing parents and caregivers and spouses and employees and friends and daughters and, you know, all these other things. We can put good things into the world. And yes, maybe we do struggle with our stuff, but Mm -hmm. there are ways to work through that. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Like that, that is, that is the key, right? You are more than your stuff. That is mm-hmm. it's such an important message. And I think it's, but it's so easy to think, well, my house looks, you know, looks terrible. I, I feel terrible in my house. So that means that I'm a failure as a person yes, or as a mom or, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's so easy. And to you know, that. How, har- how much harder is it for us to work through something that we're struggling with if the messages that we're giving ourselves are things that are holding us down and holding us back. Because mm-hmm. those kinds of words are oppressive, right? It makes us feel like we're sinking. It doesn't make us want to show up for our space and to make a change. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you say to someone who's super overwhelmed and has been telling themselves that they're a failure at, at you know, keeping their house clean or decluttering or something like that? How do you, mm-hmm. like, how do you help them? 
Um, the first thing is I tell them to take a couple of breaths because, mm -hmm. you know, when we are, when we feel overwhelmed and when we feel anxious, our brain just starts to spin. And, you know, I kind of liken it to when the washing machine is on the spin cycle. If that's all of the choices that you can make and they're spinning around really, really, really fast and you just think you're going to like reach your hand in and grab one out and then that's just going to be the right decision or going to be the right thought about yourself. It's usually not in alignment, you know, and I think um, usually when overwhelm and anxiety come into play, it's because we're looking at too many things. We're looking at a whole entire room, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe what we need to do is we need to laser focus. We need to do one tiny zone, one corner of a kitchen table, one drawer in the kitchen, one bookshelf in the living room. And if we get anxious and we're spiraling again, can maybe make it smaller, mm -hmm. make it like half of a bookshelf. Because there is no hierarchy in decluttering that says, mm -hmm. if you marathon clean and you knock out your whole house in six hours, you win the decluttering game. Like, it just, it's okay. It's okay if it takes longer, right? It's okay if, you know, your best friend or your mother or your sister does it differently. If you oh. need to take longer, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Shocker, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it's okay. kind of like, or I think sometimes people are shocked that when they do that marathon cleaning and they do it for hours and they do get their place to a point where they feel good about it, they haven't learned how to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So now, now they're losing it. And then what do they say to themselves? Oh, well, this is what always happens. See, I'm a failure. I can't declutter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just, there's another skill set you haven't learned yet. Mm. <sighs> so good. So good. This is like everything. Like if people could just hear this. Yeah. If any... Like, yeah, gosh, it's 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 so important. It's so important. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about how, like, what kind of a mindset should we be going for? Like, what what do you think? Like, what you know, where do you point your clients? So I think that a lot of people get confused when they think that in order to show up for their space, they have to feel super motivated. Mm. And so, if they don't feel super motivated they don't show up and then they get frustrated with themselves and their space and then they're not feeling motivated. And so I always kind of picture motivation as, you know, if, if you have your house and your neighbor's house and at your house, you're just like, I'm stupid. I can't do it. I'm too exhausted. It'll never change anyways. Why should I start? And motivation's like just about to knock on your door, but it's like, oh, okay. That's yeah, that's kind of intense. But your neighbor is over there going, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try it for like five, 10 minutes. I'm just going to make a decision about three things. Well, then motivation's going, okay, I'm going to go to her house. <laughs> right? She's a little bit more open-minded, and I kind of do want to open the door there because we don't have to be motivated to make change. The mm. hardest part, and I honestly believe this, the hardest part about decluttering is actually just starting mm -hmm. because it's easier to, to stay in motion when you are already in motion. Mm-hmm. Right? So sometimes it isn't that we lack motivation. What we struggle with is task initiation. So Ooh. if you really want to deal with your, you know, let's say your um, kitchen counter is fully, you know, there's like no white space at all. There, it's just, you know, feeling chaotic and you feel overwhelmed about walking into that space, find another reason not to get up and declutter. But let's say, do I have any mugs in the family room that need to go to the kitchen? Mm -hmm. So then you pick up the mug. And then you're already standing in the kitchen. And once you're in the kitchen, you can say to yourself, okay, I'm going to do one tiny zone. Or I'm just going to unload the dishwasher. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. check in with my body. And now I'm going to reload the dishwasher. I'm going to get it started. Because dishwashers are like magical fairies. You just need to add the soap and add the dishes. And it washes it for you. Right? <laughs> so let the magical fairies do their business. Yes. But I, it's sometimes though we, like, we sit on the couch longer watching Netflix for probably longer than we should when we get that annoying message that asks us, are you still watching as you've been sitting there so long? And that's weird, Netflix. I think that should change. But because we're just like, oh, it feels so hard to show up to declutter. So make it easier for yourself. Give yourself a reason to go into the space. Okay. So you just said something that blew my mind. You said the problem isn't motivation. The mm -hmm. problem is task initiation. Yes. I think that is genius. Like, so we shouldn't be saying, well, how do I get motivated? That's the wrong question. Right. We're sh we should be saying, how do we get started? How do I Which get started? Which is a totally different question. Yep. And yep. maybe it's just we grab the mug and we go in the kitchen. Now we're started. 
It's like, yeah, we're still get up and hang the mug. I mean, I think that sometimes we think that if we don't have the whole plan figured out, then we just can't start. Mm -hmm. When really, we don't have to know anything about the full plan. That's not even any of our business. We Mm. just need to start. So we just need to pick up a mug, go into the kitchen, put it in the dishwasher or rinse it off, put it in the sink, whatever that is, and then pick a tiny, tiny micro zone. Keep it small, keep it laser focused, and keep it easy. Because decluttering doesn't have to be drudgery. It Mm. doesn't have to be painful and difficult. (laughs) It's a good news. <laughs> All right. I know. Yeah. Alerts. There you go. That's spoiler alert. It doesn't have to be drudgery. <laughs> spoiler alert. Yes. It's good news. Isn't this good news? Oh my gosh. I love it so much. This is this is amazing. Okay. So we've gotten started. We're we've got, you know, our mindset is better than yep. it was, hopefully. Let's talk about shame. What are, what are some of the reasons, what are some of the causes of shame that you see, you know, when you're working with clients? So when we have a voice of shame, when we say things that are, um, that are unkind, that are mean about ourselves, um, that is not our own natural voice. So babies are not born Mm -hmm. hating things about themselves. (laughs) They simply aren't. Right. I, I mean, if you look at toddlers, toddlers think they can nearly do anything in the world until they get overwhelmed and they might ask another adult for help. Mm-hmm. But if we have voices that are harsh, those are voices that we have inherited growing up. So mm-hmm. it could be a parent, a grandparent, a schoolyard bully. It could be a teacher. And it doesn't always mean that it's intentional. But we pick up on the energy of the place that we grew up in and the places where we spent a lot of our time. And trauma trickles down from one generation to another. So if I know like in my case with my mom, she never she was never as organized as her sister. So she always told herself that she couldn't be organized, that she was never any good at this. And someone always she felt like someone always had to come and rescue her and save her. And so I grew up thinking, because no one really taught me how to keep my room clean. Mm -hmm. And they would always make jokes, oh you're just like your mother. You can't keep your room Mm -hmm. clean. So the voice that I internalized for a long time was that I was hopeless. Like, it just, mm. I can't do it. My aunt can do it, and her daughters can do it because they grew up in a different environment, but I can't do it. And so I think that there's an act, of, I think, is sometimes of forgiveness, that wherever these voices are coming from, we need to realize that they're not ours, mm. um, that we can forgive the people that kind of sort of placed them there. We can let go of that. But I think we really have to realize that just because we think it or just because we were told it, it is not our truth. Oh, that is so good. Mm. That is that is amazing. That's not our voice. Even though maybe it's in our head, but it's actually not it's oh. not from us. That is beautiful. Yeah. So we can, you know, we can learn to let go of that. And there's different ways. I mean, you can like write it on paper and then like burn it in the fireplace. You can just, uh-huh. you know, choose. Sometimes I always say to my clients, if you can't find that voice of kindness, borrow mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my clients, mm-hmm. I'm always going to cheer them on. I'm always going to tell them, sure, you're capable. You right. don't have to be perfect about it. Just give it your best shot, and that's okay. That's enough. Yes. But I find it really interesting, and I think this, is, this applies in so many areas of our life, is that um, if you look at the benefits of kindness— Kindness can lower, you know, like a voice of kindness for ourselves, um, kindness towards others. It can lower your blood pressure. It can lower your heart rate. Uh, Mm -hmm. Kindness, um, it literally is scientifically proven that it helps plants grow. They did a scientific study where plants had the same amount of sunshine, the same amount of water. One of them was talked kindly to, one group was talked kindly, and the other one, uh, people would say mean things to the plants. Mm -hmm. Plants that got that voice of kindness, they were more healthy and they grew better, right? So it's really, it's a proof that kindness is good for our bodies. It's good Mm -hmm. for our mental health. But we think that we just need to be harder on ourselves and shame ourselves more, and all of a sudden we're gonna suddenly be like perfectly productive? It's, that doesn't, Mm -hmm. that doesn't serve us. That's not in our favor. Right, I mean, if, if shame worked, then we'd all be like, skinny and and glowing and the yeah. the picture of health and our houses would look fabulous right? and i'd be out of a job as a therapist right nobody yeah. ever comes to me and says i need your services because i'm really kind to myself because i was too nice to myself yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. But yet we still feel like, like, oh, I just need to, I just need to kick myself in the, in the butt a little bit harder. (laughs) That'll work. Yeah. And sometimes do we, we do need to push ourselves a little bit, but we can still push ourselves with kindness Mm -hmm. because we can push ourselves by saying, I really want this situation, like the, how this space feels, I want it to change. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way it's going to change is if you show up and attend to it. Mm. Oh, that's good. Okay, so there's a difference between kindness mm-hmm. and like letting yourself off the hook completely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I because I think it is kind to ourselves and kind to our space to make intentional decisions about our time and our energy to show up to make changes in that space. Mm-hmm. That is ki- that is kindness to ourselves and to our environment. Mm-hmm. Okay, that and that's that's a key distinction, mm-hmm. right? Because a lot of times we think, oh, you know, like like it's all fine, don't worry about it, you know, give yourself a break, but mm-hmm. that may or may not be what what we need. So how do we know? How do how do I know if I should sit on the couch and doom scroll and Netflix and you know, until it gives me that message or right. if I need to, you know, get myself up and, and get moving? Um <laughs> I think it comes down to uh, am I happy with the choices that I've made? And because we have to be honest with ourselves, am I happy with the choices that I'm making right now? And mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want people to misconstrue that and say, "Well, I have to declutter all the time, or else I'm never going to be happy." Because mm-hmm. there's a balance. The one thing that we never want our clients to feel is burnt out. We don't want mm-hmm. you to go to burnout because if you're going to burn it yourself out, you're not going to show up for your space, and you're not going to maintain what you've accomplished. So it is a tricky balance. But, you know, I think it's good to do some decluttering time and then fully enjoy mm-hmm. our downtime. And sometimes we need to fully enjoy our downtime and then show up for our decluttering time. Mm, yeah. And I can see actually how it would work the opposite. Like, like maybe kindness means, like, you need to sit still and take a break. Yeah. Yep. Like, that is the thing. Like, mm-hmm. so even though you want to get up and your part of you is like, oh my gosh, we got to, we got to go, go, go. Maybe mm-hmm. kindness is telling me to stay put for a little bit. Yeah. And kindness too can also be practice maintaining what you've accomplished already. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you can move on and declutter more spaces because maintaining is usually the one thing that people forget. They get really proud of themselves for everything they've decluttered, which is amazing. That's a, that's a huge win. I think it's so great. But if you're not maintaining it, you will lose it over time, and then you're going to be frustrated, and we want to break that cycle. Um, so talk a little bit. I know you work you work intensely with people who have a lot of grief and trauma in their backgrounds. Can you talk a little bit, like, what what's unique and different, um, you know, if someone has that, and that is one of the causes of their clutter? Mm. I think um, one of the stumbling blocks for a lot of people Uh, especially where grief is involved. And I think with any kind of grief, there's a level of trauma. So they really do go hand in hand. I think it's the fear of letting go of something because it means that they didn't love that person enough or they will forget some of the memories that are attached with that person. And I tell people all the time that, you know, everything that that person meant to you, that still exists in time. You know, that relationship is still everything that it was. The experiences Mm -hmm. that you have still happened. The memories are still there. And it is okay to honor the age and stage of life that you're at now, Mm -hmm. right? And if some of those items don't fit into this new life, that's okay. It doesn't doesn't mean that you're letting go of that person or letting go of those memories. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a time thing. That is something that we can't predict how long it's going to take. And if someone says to them, well, you know, you should be over that by now. They're wrong. Like, it is mm-hmm. it is so deeply individual. But there is some freedom on the other side of really just keeping the mm-hmm. things that we treasure, that we want to take up prime real estate in our home, and letting go of the things that don't. And I think the other part of that is, you know, if they have family members, especially this is for a lot of my clients that have lost parents, Uh, Someone else else in their family will say, well, you know, like, I want mom's dining room table needs to stay in the family. Mm -hmm. But, like, that person doesn't have room for mom's dining room table, and they expect you to keep mom's dining room table. You have your own dining room table. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, this is an opportunity to practice some boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. If this person Mm -hmm. really wants it, 
then they need to be responsible for it. If they choose to get some kind of storage unit for it, they can. If they want to change their, you know, what they have in their house to keep moms down at your table, they can. But mm. you are not the curator of your, you know, of your parents' life. Yes. You don't have to keep all the things. Yeah, we don't, do we? <laughs> no. And I don't think enough people are talking about that. You mm. know, we feel beholden, you know, well, especially if, um, like, I like this idea of, you know, you have an Aunt Edna who loved, loved, loved something, and Aunt Edna says, when I die, you have to keep it, mm-hmm. and you don't love that thing, and you're like, but Aunt Edna loved it so much, and mm-hmm. that's beautiful that Aunt Edna loved it, but Aunt Edna's gone, so she doesn't have an opinion anymore, so you know <laughs> what? If you don't want to keep it, it is okay to let that thing go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let it go with love. Oh, right. for sure. Put a blessing on it if you need to. Yeah. Some people do. Like, you know, thank you for the memories that you gave me. Thank you for the happiness that you gave the person who loved it. And now I hope that someone else that loves it will find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Yeah, I think that really does hold so many people back. You know, they think, but they, they, they left this to me. This, is, this was my job. Yeah. You know, and I'm letting people down. Um, but what you're saying is that's, that's just not the case. No, no. So we have to be careful. What messages are we telling ourselves? Mm-hmm. And is that message serving us or is it holding us back? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. So amazing. Amazing. Okay. Selena, tell us where can people connect with you? Where can they learn more? How can they find you? Okay. So, uh, well, you can email me at decluttering at gmail.com. Or you can find I have a free group on Facebook called Declutter Talk. And you can also find me um, at YouTube at Declutter Talk. Declutter Talk on YouTube, Facebook. Go connect with Selena, you guys. She's amazing. She's got some excellent resources. And you're going to want to get into her world. Such good stuff. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Um, Do you have any parting thoughts that you want to (sighs) share? You know, um, if you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed take some deep breaths and micro focus, figure out what is the next right thing, right? Do I need to just get a glass of water right now? Do I need to open up the windows, let in some fresh air? And can I make, can I walk into a room that makes me feel overwhelmed and make a decision about three things? Start with three things. That's it. Start with three things. Amazing. Fabulous. Okay. Thank you for being here. This was amazing. Thank you for having me, Sarah. Okay. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this podcast, would you leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts? It would really help us get the word out. To start your decluttering journey, go to thedeclutteringclub.com forward slash start. That's the T-H-E declutteringclub.com forward slash start.